Hi, this is Savannah, and welcome to my texture painting tutorial within ZBrush. So we already have our model in the view, the three-fourths view that we'd like, and in edit mode. It already has a material and some basic colors embedded into the model. Let's go ahead and drag it up to the highest geometry. In this case, it's 1.104 million polys or points. We also have made a UV map, and if you have a UV map, and you're going to take your model outside of ZBrush into another program like Max or Maya, you're going to want to have a UV map to create texture maps. I always try to have it on a high size to get the highest quality of texture onto your model. So I have it on set on 4096 by hitting the button and using the UV master I made a texture map. As you can see there. If you're going to leave it inside of ZBrush itself, you really don't need to have to have, you don't really have to have a UV map. <clears throat> but it does help to creating better textures within ZBrush. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to our texture menu. And we're going to import couple textures. They are high res textures that I got off of S 3D SDK. You can also take photographs of yourself or other friends and family. Just make sure that they're really high in the file size so you get the best detail out of your photos. This one is 2336 by 3554, and they're both in PSD. I'm going to go ahead and hitting the command or control key while in the import, you can select more than one texture at a time and hit the import. First, going to click on the three fourths view. Then, we're going to click on Add to Spotlight. This will add the texture to the Spotlight widget. As you can see, this is your Spotlight widget. You can move the widget around anywhere on your canvas or the texture by clicking on the little circle in the center of the widget. To make a bigger scale of your texture or smaller, Simply click on the scale button on the round counterclockwise to s make it smaller and clockwise to make it bigger to fit onto your character. To get out of the widget and the spotlight, click on the shift and the Z key at the same time and let go and it'll turn off your spotlight get it back on 
Simply hit it again, the shift and the Z key, and hit the Z to bring back the widget. Align your mesh or your texture to your mesh as best as you can. Also hit the rotate and using the same direction counterclockwise to rotate to the left, clockwise to rotate to the right, and better align your texture. But as you can see, she doesn't quite fit to your character underneath. The other things that I'll show you really quick is the opacity button. It's the same thing clockwise or counterclockwise. will change the opacity of your texture itself. And also hit polyframe and as you can see you can see your polyframe through the texture that's on your model. Once you have it sort of where you would like it, click on the nudge button and move your widget away from where you will be drawing. With your move tool selected, to the original intensity of the brush. Okay. You can push and pull your texture to better fit your character underneath. also use the smooth brush. I tend to use the smooth crease brush at a very low Z intensity to smooth back out some of the movement to get less stretching of your texture and to clear up any problems like creases within your texture that they don't show up on your model. can change the draw size as you go along and move only certain parts of the mess or texture and make it as big as you want to move larger pieces. And smooth back in to help it deform better to the model. Careful not to click on the outside of the red line on your texture
so that your texture stays positioned where it's at. While in three-fourths mode, or view, you're probably not going to want to pay attention too much to the areas on the side here of your model. The reason being is that we'll be using the front view for that. I'm going to pay the most attention to the sides. Of your character. I also wouldn't suggest going out of your widget at this point to repositioning your model because your texture won't go along with it. And you'd have to re-nudge some major areas. Of your texture. I use the opacity a lot to find out where my textures are. First is my model. The better align texture. And as you can see, I clicked out of the line and my texture went off the deep end. Once you have the texture where you sort of want it, click on the spotlight radius. And as you can see, out of the widget comes a little bit of a light. Only works when you go clockwise. Go ahead and turn that light so that it's fairly good size. And turn back up the opacity of your map. 
then hit the Z button. As you can see, in the cursor, some of my texture, and use the move tool for that. Click on the inflate or the standard. Make sure there's no strokes on either. Although if you want really precise drawing, you can use the strokes. I usually, for the first bit, have the RGB all the way up to 100. Also click on Activate Symmetry, so it will paint on both sides of your model. Go ahead and start painting. your character. Onto the model. Pay most attention to the sides. of your model. Also turn off Activate Symmetry to paint. Once you have that, go ahead and hit Shift-Z again to turn it off. Now, as you can see, you have a bit of texture. On your character. Go ahead and click on the front view. Textures. And click on the same button as before. Off your light box. And click on the other you can delete it. Then we click on the new view of your texture. Turn down the opacity. And using the same scale and rotate if you need it. Try to align. your texture is best to align one of the eyes, the eye of my character. Move your widget off and hit the nudge key again. Make sure you have your move brush selected. Go ahead and start positioning your texture onto the model. that it lines up with your model. And unlike this one, the, or the three-fourths view, well, actually just like the three-fourths view, pay less attention to the sides because you already have texture applied to the sides of your model. Also use 
a side view. on top of the 3D, or the 3 fourths view, and the front view. Once you have what you'd like, Go ahead and use the spotlight radius again and hit C. This time though I'm going to click on my standard and as you can see it's got a low RGB density. Reactivate symmetry. For now, and continue to draw. On the character, especially in the front part of the face. overlay key and the Z key to turn off a widget. Okay. Not the best in the world, but it'll do. The other thing you can do clicking on the spot light widget turning up and down the spotlight radius also pin the spotlight wherever that color is. Go out of it. And as you can see, the nose has been selected. And you can create many different interesting textures using that as well. Wherever this circle is, that spotlight will pin it. Also use this to lightly paint. over some of the darker areas. It kind of works like the clone brush in Photoshop. Also turn off the widget, select a color that you like, keeping the RGB intensity low, color another one that you like, hit gradient, 
And as you can see, lightly colorize your model to whatever color you're picking. Also helps to have a alpha on there. Continue to paint. And get more even. Skin color. and remove some of the areas that are too dark or too light due to shadowing. Also turn off the gradient. Just use the spray tool. And lightly and slowly change some of the highlights or shadows on your model. And you can continue fixing this all up. The more different views as far as the textures go that you have the better it can get too. You can do areas like underneath the nose and the chin area. You have the side view that works a lot better for doing the ears. Now you just continue painting. And there you have it, after done poly painting, and always add other textures to it, make it more unique. Go ahead and do a little render. So you can see what it looks like in render. And I hope you enjoyed the ZBrush tutorial.